Years ago, when I was teaching, I used to tell my students that one prime important skill in drawing is knowing where to stop. People who first started drawing always run into the trouble of overdoing their work. That will give no good results to the drawing. Overdoing is an enemy to everyone who draws. But what about underdoing? When this happens, it usually means you consider your drawing unfinished, so it is not yet time to stop. This is an odd situation for a drawing process, since it's always so tempting to put down one more stroke, simply because you can. To understand the next extra stroke will ruin your drawing is almost a work of art. This self-assessment is the key to improvement in drawing. The portrait in this video demonstrate this underdoing notion as an example. I've painted this TV celebrity before. This time, the drawing is a much bigger piece. The portrait was done some weeks ago, and during this period of time, I've always known that painting needs something more. You can see that at this stage, Natalie is already beautifully drawn. Expressing a joy of seeing the butterfly in the painting, but if the drawing stops right here, what is then the story between her and the butterfly? I want to tell something more in this painting beyond illustrating just a happily looking beautiful lady. But what to do next? I've even framed the drawing and let it sit on the floor for quite a while. I knew I just have to wait for an idea to come. The composition of this drawing is slightly different from one that is usual. When I first started, I have positioned the figure slightly to the right to anticipate the object to her left, that is the butterfly. So the meaning of this drawing is more than just the representation of the person. The painting should tell a connection, a relationship, a story between and among the two. When the drawing was first laid out. I instinctively knew that some color should be put on the top right-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner. It was a calculation of visual weight. One can see that the figure occupies the center and the entire right-hand bottom of the page. This eccentric distribution is further complicated by the butterfly. This is a small figure and is like an island itself in a drawing, and therefore acting much like a pivot point. The rest of the drawing could have the intention to rotate. This is why I think the visual waves at corners are needed. They help to anchor the whole drawing to counteract the rotation effect causing by the isolating butterfly. What matters in stability is the differential distribution of visual weight. If I could make the butterfly heavier, the lady figure could be given a stronger contrast and eventually the whole picture a higher value. But doing so would worsen the instability of visual weights, and therefore I think the top and bottom left-hand corner would have to be darkened. But how? This is when the idea of the ripple came into the story. I tested the idea of adding the ripples by doing a little sketch. The ripples would not only suggest a water reflection of the butterfly, but also rationalize the ripple waves ascending to the bottom of the page. The strong reflection suggests further importance of the butterfly and angers a much heavier visual weight to this pivot point. And to go along with that effect, the rest of the picture has to be stronger in hue and higher in value. You can see as a result of doing that. The hair of the lady would have to be darkened a lot. Contrast between light and dark brings the details on her face to the next level of importance. It is by contrast of impression that the details on her face became more explicit and sharper. Although nothing has been done to modify her features. Following the spreading out of the ripples, it is now convincing to put more weight at the bottom of the page. As a counterbalance to this increment, the top of the page, especially the top left-hand corner, now needs more weight. The hue was so strong at this stage that the coloring cannot have any bleeding at all, 
our specimen would be diluted and diffused. As a result of adding the ripples, darkening the reflection, sharpening the features, putting weight to the corner of the page, the entire picture has its value lifted up. Finally, a little bit of splashing tricks and some more interlocking of ripples with the figure boosts the feeling of a more cinematic scenery. Last but not least, checking little details and correct them if you feel uncomfortable. In this case, it is reflection on the eyes. Who said watercolor painting cannot be amended? Heaps of correction I have done to this painting, but the tricks of doing so would be another story. There you go, Natalie Tong in a cinematic scenery. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe my channel and like my videos.